Ave Maria, and welcome to episode 20 of Marian Shrines of the World, where we will explore the establishment of the National Shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary at Andacoyo, Chile. The town features a basilica plus a second church, both of which are national shrines. Our Lady of Andacoyo is highly regarded, and each first Sunday of the month her statue is paraded around the plaza in a procession. Andacoyo is the country's second most important shrine, renowned even beyond the borders of Chile. But how did this shrine come about? Well, when the Spaniards discovered Chile in the 16th century, it is believed they brought with them a three-foot wooden statue of the Madonna and Child. In 1544, the Spaniards founded the nearby village of La Serena, and the statue was brought there. This area was rich in minerals such as gold and copper, an important mining centre already developed by the local Indians. The Spaniards exploited these deposits and, in 1549, the indigenous population attacked and destroyed La Serena, killing nearly every Spaniard. A surviving priest fled to the hills, bringing the statue with him. Exhausted and unable to carry it further, he buried it in the nearby hills. The village was re-established later that year and a few years later was given the title of city by royal decree of King Carlos I of Spain. The statue remained hidden in the hills until the battles of the conquest ended and the natives converted to Christianity. One of the recent converts, a man named Coelho, was cutting trees in the mountains. He found and the discarded statue after his axe blade had accidentally hit it. He was astonished to then hear a voice say, You are hurting me. He took the wooden image home and had a dream in which the statue of the Virgin told him to build a church, with the dream ending with her saying, Hurry up, Coelho, or under Coelho. And this is believed by many to be how the town received its name. Eventually a chapel was erected. People came for devotions to pray to the Virgin, who still bears the scars of the axe. Four churches have been built for the Virgin over the years. The first was constructed in the 16th century and the second in the 17th century, but this only lasted until 1776. A third church, constructed in the 18th century, after undergoing numerous repairs for earthquake damage, is where the image of the Virgin now resides for most of the year. It also contains a museum with numerous items of historical interest. A present large cathedral started in 1873 and built from wood was completed in 1893. It is one of the great examples of wooden architecture in Chile and can accommodate up to 10,000 people. After four centuries of veneration in Andacoyo, with devotion coming from beyond Chilean borders, it was decreed on June the 15th, 1899, at the command of Pope Leo the 13th, that the statue be crowned with a crown of gold. The decree was implemented the crown and jewels were paid for in large part by local fundraising and the statue of Our Lady of Andacoyo was crowned on December 26, 1901. In 1998, St John Paul II declared the large church a minor basilica, henceforth known as the Basilica of Our Lady of Andacoyo. The Feast of Our Lady of Andacoyo is celebrated twice a year with some 300,000 pilgrims from Chile and abroad visiting the shrine. Some come on the first Sunday of October for what is known as a La Fiesta Chico, or small festival. However, the majority come for the Festa Grande, or great festival, which takes place in December. The Fiesta Grande, one of the biggest religious festivals in Chile, is filled with colour, dancing and music performed by numerous confraternities and dance groups. It starts each year on December 23rd and lasts for five days, during which a statue is dressed in her crown and special clothes embroidered with gold, then carried in a solemn procession to the basilica accompanied by dance groups and pilgrims. 
Our Lady of Andacoyo is renowned for many miracles, such as stopping a smallpox epidemic in 1871, healing a slave's wounded stomach and finding lost miners. Over the years, many people have left signs and plaques on the shrine walls attesting to personal miracles and answers to prayers through her intercession. Pilgrims come from all places to bring their reverence, thanks, and to ask for favours. Buses bring pilgrims to the shrine. However, many of them walk distances of over 50 kilometres, beginning their journey in the late afternoon and walking through the night to escape the searing summer sun in the desert. It is not unusual for pilgrims to make their entrance into the basilica on their hands and knees, but some go so far as to make several kilometres or even the entire trip that way. Regardless of what one's own convictions may be, few people can escape a sense of admiration for such displays of devotion. Lighting candles as an act of devotion is so popular that Areas of the basilica floor are thickly covered in wax that has dripped from the countless candles lit by pilgrims over the years. Accommodation is unavailable for many of the pilgrims to the small town, with most contending themselves with a shady spot near the cathedral, where they can extend their sleeping bags and recover from the long walk. The celebrations are also accompanied by traditional dances, singing and dancing in the presence of the Virgin Mary, who brings us Jesus, is exactly what living the gospel means, particularly the message of the visitation. At the time of Mary's visit to Elizabeth, John the Baptist slept in his mother's womb, literally jumped, like David and his companions danced before the Ark of the Covenant. The purpose of these dances is to honour and serve Our Lady. The culmination of the celebration comes when the many dance groups are finally allowed to perform their dances in front of the Holy Image. With more than 200 dance groups, each is allowed a strictly limited time to perform and it is at this time when the crowd is thickest. During the annual Christmas celebration, a privileged citizen is appointed to make a public apology to the Virgin Mary in Koyo's name for the injury his acts caused her. This also symbolises the people's sorrow for their own sins. Officially known as Our Lady of the Rosary of Andacoyo, she invites all to pray the Rosary for meditating on the Our Fathers and Hail Marys. will draw us into contemplation of Jesus and to share the mysteries of his life. Devotion to our Lord and Our Lady are so interwoven that it is not surprising that the statue of Our Lady of Andacoyo is processed each first Sunday of the month because even with the consent of the parish priest, the first Sunday can replace the first Saturday's promises of Our Heavenly Mother. Our Lady still calls out, You are hurting me. Will you not volunteer to be privileged citizens and step forward? To ask for pardon, will you not make reparation? Together with the Holy Rosary, making reparation for the offences against Our Lady includes sacramental confession, communion of reparation and an act of consecration to her Immaculate Heart. May Our Lady of Andacoyo help you do so. Ave Maria.